Welcome back to KTN Sunrise Live. Remember our contact details. If you want to get in touch with us for a comment, a suggestion or a question, 8040 is our SMS number. You can get us on Twitter. Uh, our account is at KTN Kenya and you can always catch us online on ktnkenya.tv slash live. Now in studio with me, I'm joined by the acting CEO of NHIF, the National Hospital Insurance Fund, Simon Olekirgoti. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Edith. All right, and this morning, we're going to be discussing matters NHIF which has not been alien to the news in the past months. Yeah. Um, you've only been in that position for four months I believe. Yes, yes that's How it. has it been for you so far? Well it's been very interesting with ups and downs uh, of any vital organization like NHIF. Uh, NHIF is a very beautiful organization, an organization that has a clear mandate uh, to give Kenyans uh, equitable and affordable health care. All right. Um, you've just said ups and downs, and as you've rightfully said, NHIF is a beautiful organization and more so important for yeah. Kenyans. Yeah. Have those downs been s sorted? Where is NHIF at at the moment? Yeah, the downs have been somehow subsided. Uh, you know, when I went, there was a caretaker board which did a commendable job uh, to sustain the, the fund. And uh, I met a very, very energetic staff, demoralized though, but uh, for now things are uh, back to normal. Uh, what we want to embark now is to educate members of the public uh, to, recruit them, to recruit them as members of NHIF and to also sustain the members uh, database that we have so far. All right. Apart from the uh, boardroom wrangles, allow me to call yes, them that, yes, that NHIF yes, was facing, yes. there was also a lot of concern from members of the public about the new rates which were yes. supposed to be implemented. Yes. Um, have those come into effect? Yeah, the new rates are supposed to have come into effect from 1st of October. But then we had uh, Code 2 and uh, it is affiliates going to court again uh, to stop the rates and uh, the case will be heard by tomorrow. I don't want to discuss anything that is, uh, that is in court. But I wanted to stress that actually NHIF meant good that Kenyans need universal health care. Mm -hmm. And that if we implement the new rates, we are going to roll out an outpatient scheme whereby we can be able to take care of all your needs, all your medical needs, as an outpatient. Currently, we are only rolling out the inpatient scheme, right. which is not, uh, well, it's, it's not sufficient. Uh, people still have to use a lot uh, of out-pocket okay. to pay for their services. Um, all right, let's just go back to the beginning and talk about how exactly NHIF works. Yes. I think a lot of people have their monies deducted, but they don't know yes. how exactly the scheme works. Yes, good. Uh, NHIF was started way back in 1966. And our forefathers had a grand idea that this will be rolled out to all and sundry. Uh, unfortunately, it stagnated on the employment level. Mm -hmm. So it became like a payroll tax. There's only people who are employed in government. Uh, later on, they were joined by those who are working in the private sector and in industries. And uh, the payments were minute, 30 shillings, maximum to 320. So up to now, we, the highest paid pay 320 shillings. Right. And that is why we said, uh, after doing some actual studies, going around all over the world, comparing to other similar bodies, and we found that we can actually, uh, Kenyans can afford to pay 500, the lowest if you are earning up to 600. Mm -hmm. And if you are earning above uh, 100,000, you pay only 2,000 shillings in a month. So uh, it is a pool. It is an insurance. So it, doesn't, it does not mean that you must utilize your money. You see, the, uh, I carry you, you carry me. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we put our money in this pool. And because if you consider the, the amount of uh, charges, even for consultation, right. you will finish that, uh, that amount of viewers which you pay for a year. Just okay. to see a doctor. Uh, um, and these new rates, I understand, will be catering for a much more robust yes. outpatient cover, y yes. um, including some uh, s some procedures like dialysis? Dialysis, renal services, 
we, we have a whole, a whole range of benefits that you can get through the outpatient benefit, general consultations, uh, laboratory tests and investigation, drugs and medicines, x-rays, ultrasound, diagnosis and treatment of common ailments, ENT services, a whole range of treatment, dressing and diagnostic, like the renal services for instance. Mm -hmm. Let me say Edith, we this year we rolled out uh, the civil servants medical scheme. Right. Where the civil servants are no longer getting their medical allowances in their salaries. So this amount is given to care uh, to NHIF and then it, I have now contracts certain government facilities and private facilities mm -hmm. where members uh, choose which facilities are near them and which facilities can, uh, can treat them and their dependents. I'm telling you, ask any civil servants, they will tell you this is the best scheme that has ever happened. And we wanted this to be emulated by all Kenyans. We have been able to send even uh, some civil servants overseas for treatment uh, through the civil servants medical scheme. Already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About four of them mm -hmm. uh, went to India and uh, the amount involved is over two million. And you cannot imagine uh, the, the headaches that could have been to those families if they were not in the scheme. All right, but for people who are not civil servants, for yeah. people who are in the private sector and contributing yeah. to NHIF, yes. which hospitals do they get treatment from? Yes. For now, when it is in, uh, when it is still uh, inpatient, they go to the normal hospitals, government hospitals, and there are hospitals which are government accredited. Government hospitals. Yes, right. even private hospitals mm -hmm. that have been accredited by NHIF. Right. We have an, an elaborate system where we visit this, uh, these hospitals. We have a checklist to find out what medication they are able to give, what facilities do they have. Uh, do they have enough bed capacity? Do they have enough doctors, nurses? So it is very thorough. It's very thorough. All right. If we move, Edith, and this is why I want to, you know, people are talking about new rates as if they are uh, as big as, you know, you can, you know, so this is exaggerated. If we move to collect those new rates, the benefits are going to be more. Because you pay 500. Uh, it is for you and your dependents, uh, those, the, the, you, for instance, your spouse, and then the kids that, uh, that you will declare mm -hmm. will be attended, both in and outpatient. All right. Um, the, the problem is that some people are saying that um, the way NHIF works, you go to a hospital, yeah. and perhaps it's a district hospital, perhaps it's the only hospital available to you in your yeah. particular region, yeah. and they don't have the facilities, and yeah. they don't have the drugs, so you're yeah. forced to fork out more money. Oh, yes. uh, how will it work now that you're asking people to contribute more? Well, let me admit, we have challenges in the facilities uh, we have in the country, and this has been a result of neglect for many years, right? And that's what we want to correct. For now, uh, like the civil servants uh, medical scheme, we pay this hospital in advance what is called capitation. Mm -hmm. And we are following up to ensure that the, the money they receive, they utilize to better the services they can give to people. We are looking at the, the pharmacies to see whether it, the drugs have been provided we are looking also at the general area, you know, even the cleanliness in hospitals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go to this hospital and you think you are not in a hospital. You think you, you are in some backyard uh, facility. So uh, we are trying to discourage that. Agreed. We tried to start a cost sharing, you know, in government hospitals where you go, you pay some little money. We intended this money to better those, those services. But we realize even the cost sharing, uh, sometimes hospital management don't utilize this money for the purposes that the, the we intended. Mm -hmm. I, I went around a few facilities in Coast and uh, Trift Valley, and I found out that uh, this cost sharing money, some of them have been used to put perimeter walls. Well, uh, it's good to protect the hospital, uh, to protect your facility, but then that is not the money. The, the money the patient gives 
should not go to okay, that. Okay, but then do you have a say in what the money does? And if the money does not go into what yes. it is expected to, yes. as a government body, do you then come in and say, look, we're no longer going to be giving you this cost sharing Yes, funds? yes, we have a say because we have to protect our members. Yeah, we have to protect. I cannot come here and tell you, please join NHIF. And then when you contribute to whatever you've contributed to NHIF, I do not have a say in how that money is going. I am supposed to protect you mm -hmm. because you are my member. You are the member of NHIF. And that is why I've even instructed my brand managers that they should insist to be uh, in the board of management of the various hospitals. And the, the, the quality assurance officer must visit as often as possible the various government hospitals and all the hospitals that have been accredited by NHIF. All right. Um, remember, if you will have any questions for the acting CEO of NHIF, Mr. Simon Olekirgoti, do send us your comments on 8040. Remember, this is your opportunity to interact with him one-on-one. -on -one. 8040, again, is our SMS number. You can also send us a tweet on our handle at KTN Kenya. Uh, back to you. There seems to be a, a lot of fighting going on from members of the public and from different unions and organizations. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? I mean, you've, yeah. you have a plan and you're saying these are the benefits you're going yes. to get for your amount of money. Yes. Why are people still fighting you? The thing is, uh, I think it is historical. And uh, we've come a long way as a country. Uh, organizations like NHIF, I don't want to mention others, were seen as organizations uh, which can fund other the surplus money can be used to fund other activities apart from the mandate for which they were set. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the perceptions we want to change. That uh, if we roll out the medical scheme the way it's supposed to be, there will be no surplus funds that will attract anybody to want to admire NHIF. If this money is not going to be put in treasury bills, it's not going to be put say to buy plots and to build uh, estates, uh, people will realize that NHIF, the only money they have is to buy medicines for their members, is to equip hospitals, is, you know, so uh, that perception that there is money in NHIF will go. So the fight, so to say, uh, is uh, to control that funds, yeah, and that is why I want to come out very clearly that there are no funds there. The funds that are there is to better the lives of Kenyans, is to equip the hospitals and to give facilities as intended. Let me also say that unfortunately we did not market our fund mm -hmm. properly. And that uh, everywhere I go people tell us what is NHIF doing? I mean, how do I even become a member of NHIF? Uh, some hospitals, uh, private hospitals that were accredited to by NHIF pulled out because one, their claim, the claim processing was very long. So they would say, we treat your members, but then we take forever to get those claims. So when I moved in there, we said, we cannot process claims centrally. We have to decentralize the processing of claims and give authority levels to managers in the various branches mm -hmm. so that those hospitals around there, if our members go there, they are treated and when the claims come, we pay out very quickly. All right, speaking of claims and how quickly they'll be dispersed, yes. under the new uh, rates, yes. when you start to collect them, yes. how soon are people going to access yes. these um, robust outpatient program. Yes, at least uh, when we begin, you still, we still need about three months so that we can know exactly who are the members and what have you. We have to accredit these facilities. We have to visit them. You know, we will give you time to also choose which facility mm -hmm. you, you are going to, you know, you are going to be attended to. And then uh, we, will, uh, we will visit those facilities, find out if they have uh, if they have the, the, the requisite uh, facilities to, to award you. So we need about three months or so. So what does that mean? In those three months, if I fall yeah. ill, I can't use my NHIF No, 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 cover? you can use, you can use your card. Uh -huh. yeah, but I'm talking about the outpatient facilities. All right. Yeah, because we intend to have this thing as capitation. 
So you know in capitation you give money first of all the facility where people have chosen. Mm -hmm. So you, you go there, you tell them my money has always been here and therefore you should be able to be treated. All right, so when you have your grace period to put yes. your house in order, yes. um, at that point what happens is a lady I was speaking to yesterday and she said, what happens if maybe I'm six months pregnant and yes. I take the cover on my seventh month? Will yes. I be able to get the services for my delivery? Uh, that's good. that's a bit tricky. That's a bit tricky. I think you will continue the way you've been doing, and mm -hmm. then maybe possibly we will look those administrative. We will take every case as it comes. Yeah. So um, there was also a question regarding how much you can claim and how exactly people claim. I yes. think there's a lot of confusion regarding that and how mm -hmm. it will work once mm -hmm. the new rates are implemented. Now you see, uh, we are going to have comprehensive cover, and we are going to tell Kenyans these are the facilities available. Like I said in the outpatients, we will have the family planning issues and the number of postnatal care. All those range of benefits are going to be there. And uh, we have produced a booklet, uh, a booklet, this is the booklet, mm -hmm. where the, which we were given to the civil servants. And for as soon as we roll out the universal health or the enhanced rates, all our members, once they are registered, you are given this. And we are going to do a robust uh, public relations. We are going to do a robust communications. I hope NTN will not be tired of meeting me here. <laughs> uh, K KTV. I mean, uh, KTN. KTN. KTN will not be. And my appeal has been always that please get this card. Get your NHIF card. Get NHIF card. It will help you. It will help your family. It will help your dependents. And. Uh, you know, you, you don't know what you're missing unless, you know. What about those in the, um, uh, th those who are unemployed or those who you consider to be in the informal sector? Yes. They do make a contribution of 350, if I'm yes. not wrong, under the new rates. Yes. Um, then h how do they take NHIF? What yes. is the process of going in to take yes. their card to register for, for it? Th thank you, Edith. Actually, Let me tell you, uh, the, our greatest focus is now going to be on the informal sector. Yesterday we were in Kangemi with the border border people. I want to move to my friends, the Matatu sector. You know, before I went to NHIF, as, as the Commission of Motor Vehicles, yes. the Register of Motor Vehicles. So the Matatu, but the Matatu people are my friends. I want them to follow me to NHIF, register there as members of NHIF, that is where your benefits will be. They pay a lot, a lot when they're involved in accidents. They do harambes. You know, if people will uh, enroll in NHIF, you will not hear about this harambe for medical, medical schemes. Mm. Because already we have pulled our resources and we are put in one basket. So you've already done an harambe. You are not paying because you are going to be sick, but you are paying so that if you are kid and kid, become sick, yeah, they will be taken care of. There's a fallback plan. That's, thank you. So we want to uh, approach the informal sector, the border border people, the Matatu Welfare Associations, all those, even farmers, yeah? yeah you can go sell your cow and uh, you pay those 500 shillings for, for one year. What we are thinking is uh, if you pay for one year, we are going to get some some kind of rebate for you so that we can see how best you don't uh, you don't think you have wasted your money with NHIF. Okay, speaking of farmers and people who are businessmen, there's a perception yes. that sometimes they tend to make more money than those who are employed yes. and yet their contributions are less. It seems like uh -huh. the scheme could be out to punish those who are um, mm. under a certain pay bracket but under mm. formal employment. No, no, it is. No, 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 no. This is a social welfare. Yeah, if you are, if God has helped you to be able to have more than I have, don't say I'm your brother. <laughs> so you pay, you pay, you pay and carry your brother. After all, when we go for this Arambe for medical, uh, for med medical care, people are going to uh, overseas or whatever. So you give according to your ability. Fungula kumi. It's true. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me just give. 
the new contributions, maybe we've been having this conversation and people don't actually know what it entails. Uh, in the new proposal, the minimum contribution increases to 320 shillings per month to 2,000 shillings for people earning a monthly gross salary of 100,000 shillings and above. So if you earn 100,000 and above, it's 2,000 from 320 shillings. That's zero. Yeah. Those earning between 50,000 and 99,999. 5,000. Um, 5,000. Would... Yeah. 5,000, right? Yeah, yeah. Not 50,000. Yeah. All right, 5,000 to 99,000 yeah. would earn, uh, would have to give out 1,500 per month. Yeah. Formal sector workers in the lowest salary band of less than 5,000 per month, yeah. am I right? Would pay 150. So who are those people? The people in the formal sector with the lowest salary band? We have these casual workers, yeah. Uh, we have the casual workers and... Uh, and these people work in the factories mainly. This yeah. is, those are the people. This is these are very little. This is very little really. Okay, 150 shillings. Yeah. And if you are self-employed, then you, you get pay to pay 500 pay shillings. Good, thank you. Um, yeah. All right. There was also concern that when these new rates come into effect, yeah. of course now they've been impeded by a the court, court process, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, but when they come into effect, they'll mm. be backdated to a certain date. No, 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 no. We won't, we won't backdate. You won't backdate? We won't backdate. The court will decide the effective date, yeah, so... We, we wanted to effect them from 1st of October. We were stopped. But I'm sure when the court makes the decision, they will give the directions. All right. So, yeah. um, and the final question before we go on a commercial break, I, uh, there's a claim here. I don't know if it's a claim. Maybe you will tell me. Yeah. That the government was looking to recommend, to adopt a recommendation by the International Finance Corporation yes. or IFC, yes. um, which actually recommends that the highest paid to pay 3,885 as yes. opposed to 2,000 and the yes. lowest to pay 364 yes. as opposed to 150. Yes, that is true. Uh, there were actual studies done uh, and we commissioned IFC World Bank and they said actually we should charge 3,800. But we looked at the, you know, we are Kenyans and we are considerate, and we say let's begin with at least 2,000 for somebody earning 100,000. And then the, the lower rate, we, you know, we put at 500 so that it's just 180 more than what we, we pay. But then it's 180 that somebody could not have. You, well, you, you will try. You know, Edith, when you want it, you get it. All right, he says, when you want it, you get it. On that note, we take a short commercial break. When we come back, we take all your comments and views. I'm seeing them flowing in on 8040. Remember, if you have a question, if uh, the acting CEO of NHIF, Mr. Simon Ole Kirgoti, has said something that you don't agree with or you need clarification, send us an SMS 8040 at Katie and Kenya is our Twitter account. We'll be back with that. Welcome back to KTN Sunrise Live. We're continuing to receive your comments and questions for the acting NHIF CEO, Simon Olekirgoti. And just a clarification, there's a lot of people who are asking, why should I be charged 500 if I'm unemployed? Um, how come if I pay 5,000, I should be charging 1,500? Well, these are the new rates. If you earn 100,000 and above, then you will be deducted 2,000 shillings. Previously, you used to be deducted 320 shillings. If you earn 50,000 shillings and not more than 100,000, meaning 99,999 shillings, then you will pay 150 shillings. And if you pay 5,000 shillings a month, then, I mean, if you earn 5,000 shillings a month, then you pay 150 shillings. And for the self-employed, then it is 500 shillings. But it's an interesting question. Does this mean that if you are unemployed and yeah. cannot afford to give a monthly contribution yeah. of even 150 shillings, yeah. then you cannot get health care? No, 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 no. This is the insurance, but there's the normal government uh, taking care of it is people. Government hospitals are still there. Mm -hmm. They treat people who are either non-members of NHIF. So we are not saying you will not get uh, health care. You will still go to government hospitals, get uh, treatment. Government still equips hospitals as normal. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me get to the questions. There's so many. Thank you so much for your contribution. <coughs> I'm a farmer from central Kenya. I'm worried about the haiku initiated. Where do you expect me to get all that money? It means um, it, will be, it will leave out those who are 
rather it will be left for those who are employed and rich why do you come up with a policy that hurts taxpayers for every Kenyan to benefit and not every Kenyan will benefit I suppose that's what he wanted to ask uh, but the general question here is I don't think I'll be able to afford it yeah. it's only going to benefit the rich yeah first of all it is, uh, I must uh, thank Kenyans for their contributions and questions because it will help us better the fun and this is a process of engaging them in conversations my appearing here is to also clear the air on some things that are not being understood. Because I believe this is a Kenyan fund. This is your fund. You should be proud of it. And you should contribute uh, ideas and what have you so that we can better. For uh, the question I was just asked, we are not saying that if you don't join NH uh, NHIF, you will never be treated. No, 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 no. Government hospitals are always there and they will always be there mm -hmm. for the treatment of all Kenyans. Uh, there is a process of the government starting what we call an indigenous fund, a fund where the totally poor uh, can be given and uh, you know, paid for. So when we reach that stage and then we have that fund together with the membership fund, and then we will be able to roll out for all Kenyans. Okay. So. With the poor governance, would NHIF survive if it operated as a private entity? First of all, is there poor governance? Have you, you know, I asked you previously what's yeah. happening with the management. There was a lot of firing, hiring, yeah. instituting of a board. Yeah. What is going on with your staff? Well, uh, I must admit there were problems of governance. Uh, I'm not saying it is over now, but... Uh, when I went there, the government has appointed a board of directors, uh, which was inaugurated two weeks ago. We're going to have our first full board meeting uh, this month so that we can now decide on how to move. Uh, the government has moved very fast to try and uh, watch that image that is there. But I believe even the officers at the fund are up to the tax. All we need to do is fine tuning, training, give them confidence, yeah, and uh, retrain some. Uh, I, I believe the organization has the capacity and the ability. All we need to do is there is quite some work to be done. And when you say it has the capacity and the ability, is it going to be able to manage these fans? Because yeah. it's concerned that, look, there yeah. were so many <laughs> questions and loopholes with the old system. Yeah. Now that there's increased money, we're yeah. opening room for corruption. Yeah. Is this true? Uh, Edith, the truth of the matter is that the systems are in place. In fact, me, when I went to the fund, I thought I am going to start from nowhere to do the reforms. But I was shocked, especially with the, the kind of ICT system in place in that fund. A lot of money has been utilized to modernize processes, yeah? processes of registration, processes of payment, uh, approval levels, you know? the IT system where you can check whether the member has been admitted for how many days. And I think that is, uh, we've got at least a base we go somewhere to start from. Okay. So we, uh, I don't think there will be a problem of capacity. All we need is to strengthen the processes and uh, to put some integrity in all the processes that we require. We'll hold you accountable to that. Yes, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> that is where I am. That is where I am there. Uh, um, more questions. I did not register for the current quarter, but I've been a member for 17 years. Yes. Am I able to claim for the medical expenses incurred in that period, Edin from Kitangela? No, you have to renew. You have to renew. If, if you are a dormant pair, and then, but we have your records. All right. Yeah. Where both spouses are employed, does each contribute to NHIF separately? Y yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. And then what happens with the cover of the children in that case? Yes. Because if one says, okay, I'm going to cover three children, another one, three children, if they have yes. six children? Yes. Or seven children? Yes, you don't have to cheat and say you have, the, the, maybe one spouse takes... Uh, some other children now because we will require the birth certificate of the children and what have you. You know, this is a voluntary thing. This is, uh, I keep on saying, 
this is something where you carry me, I carry you. So if is it really you. a voluntary thing? Because um, if you have a private insurer yeah. and then at the end of the month, NHF has already deducted their cut, yes. whether or not you want them to, yes. is it really voluntary? Yeah, well, for the employed, for the civil servants, for now, you see, uh, they, they have been, they have agreed to contribute. And they, that's why the civil servant scheme is becoming very successful. I like how you've just gone around that They question. have not gone around. That is the truth of the matter. Um, I'm only, I'm the only one paying for my unemployed elderly uh, elderly parents currently yeah. at 160 yeah. the proposed rate is 500 shillings yeah. is this fair yeah it is fair if you consider the the uh, the benefits you are going to get for the 160 now it is only inpatient when they pay that 500 they will be able to go to any the facility of choice and then get medications out of it uh, we'll come back to the facility of choice question, but someone is asking, how will you identify and differentiate self-employed farmers and those earning small salaries in private sectors? That's a good question. How we will? How will you differentiate between the self-employed and the ones who are earning um, small salaries in the private sector? But we will know from, uh, from your, you know, you, you'll come and register. And... Uh, you, we don't expect people to come and cheat that I do not have anything. Because when we discover, then it is now a fraud. But people will cheat because if you are, <coughs> as you said, in the lowest salary band, yes. um, and you only contribute 150 shillings, yeah. and there's a person who's self-employed, yeah. you don't have an employer to show the records that you work for this institution or the other. Yeah. How will you tell the difference between a person who works in the Juakali sector yes. and a person who is a hustler, as they call them? <laughs> no hustler. We have, uh, you know, we have inspectors. We have a whole team of people who visit your places of uh, employment. If it is the Juakali, we have a whole sector in charge of informal sector and private sector. So we will be able. But I expect Kenyans to be truthful. Just like you declare your tax, yeah? If you can cheat uh, rev your revenue authority, uh, why should you cheat also your health uh, provider? Because it's cheaper. Well, my, we, will, we will go to the roots and find out how then. All right. Thank you, you for that question, <laughs> by the way. Thank you for that question. Uh, it, it has opened up my mind to also go and find out how best we can... Uh, I can seal those loopholes. All right. Yeah. Uh, don't you think it is wise for NHIF to first assess hospitals' capability to serve clients and contract them accordingly before enforcing the new rates? Right now, for example, you have three patients who still share bed in public facilities. Even with cover, they are still asked to buy medicines. It's we, the whole capitation question. Yes, 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 yes that's true. Uh, you remember earlier on I said... Uh, after a long time of neglect, in, uh, especially government facilities, we have a challenge. And uh, before we tell our members to select certain facilities, we have done what is called accreditation and visited them, right? And uh, we put along, you saw in the standard, we put a, lot of, a, lo a long list of facilities that will be. I cannot vote for them 100%. Mm -hmm. Because if we, if we have to say it's only this, very few of them will reach 100%. So we give them 90%, some up to even 50%, but we keep on insisting that they better their services. So it's a pity that they, uh, they are still sharing beds. Uh, these are the things we are trying to address. We have also told those facilities, if there is any benefit that you are unable, not able to give to our member, you can refer the member to the nearest hospital at their own cost because we had already uh, capitated them. Mm -hmm. So you would go to the nearest hospital, get, get, it's not you to go buy those medicine, but it's the facility you had chosen which will meet that cost. Um, to do with the 
board wrangles, as we call them. Why hasn't Kiricho, the previous board, and some health providers been taken to court, yet they were accused of improprieties? That's Abdallah. Well, uh, we are awaiting the report by the various government agencies that did the investigations. We, the Anti-Corruption and Ethics uh, Commission, uh, well, uh, almost finalizing the report. The fiduciary monitoring uh, are about to release their report. Uh, I was with their CEO uh, in the course of last week, and he told me possibly by the end of this week or next, they will release the report. So okay. the government agencies will now, uh, they, will, they will tell us the, the way forward. Okay, and uh, uh, you best believe that the media is definitely going to keep a keen eye on that. Yes. Why does NHIF spend about 60% on operations and only 40% in provision of services? Mm -hmm. First of all, are these figures... No, 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 no. The figure of uh, it is upside down. We currently spend about 40% in operations and 60% is pay out to, to our facilities. I am Mamamboga, how much do I pay a month? 500, 600. Um, there's also a person who's asking, I pay for my unemployed mom, I pay 160 for my mom who lives in rural home and does not work. Why should she now pay 500 shillings per month, yet Juakali employees pay 150? That's Ochil from Nairobi. Yeah, that, that one I said it is because there is uh, increased benefits, the outpatient. You know, Edith, I think Kenyans should understand that when you pay more, you get more, mm -hmm. yeah? There is also the difference between the inpatient, where uh, ordinary Kenyans say, NHF in Alipa Kitanda, yeah? Unalipiwa Kitanda. But this is a case whereby once we have uh, these increased rates, we will be able to pay for outpatient. Where you will walk into the hospital, you are prescribed, uh, you prescribe drugs, you're given the drugs from the pharmacy, and there you go home. Um, and there was actually a question, I can't seem to find it now, they were asking, um, does it only cover my bed cost? Is it that the, Kulipia Kitanda only now for uh, inpatient? Yes, yes, inpatient, the, 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 the current, the, the current uh, scenario. Yeah. But once we have the, the enhanced rates, they will cover outpatient. All right. Yeah. Uh, and for the inpatient in yeah. with the new rates, yes. um, is it just for the bed fee or does it cover no, other No, no, the, the new rates is going to cover all costs. All costs. Yeah, please. So if you have an operation... Yes, you, you have an worry. operation, you have what... I think this is what has really made many Kenyans know. Even the rental, yeah? You just find out how much they used to, to go for... I these know these procedures services. are extremely expensive. Very, very. All right, I'm a member of NHIF working with City Council in Nairobi. Yesterday, I was, I was at NHIF headquarters. I had birth certificates for my kids when I tried to make some corrections regarding information concerning my children mm -hmm. because of mistakes I had made earlier when registering them. I was turned down. Who can help me? Alfred Nyaosi. Is that fortunate? Why was it turned out? I did, well, we'll find out. I'll we'll find out because I think that's a kick. If you made a mistake, yeah? And uh, you, I understand there are some people who come and uh, they say, we've quarreled with my wife, with my spouse. I want them deleted from... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've seen those cases. I want them deleted from the, the, the list. Well, we, we cannot do that just like that. Yeah? Some people also come, they change their children, you know, because... The number of children, especially for the civil servants, uh, we say it is M plus four. So they put four. After a short while, they come, they say, now remove one child because you have only wanted four. I want this one. We, we definitely have to have questions to find out. Because your child is your child, your wife is your wife, until otherwise are devised through the legal system. Okay, but then what happens um, in a case of a simple correction such as the one our, our, our writer has No, 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 has it, has, it has to be attended. It has to be attended. And, uh, and I will find out. Yeah. Civil servants tr uh, regularly travel across the country in case of an emergency. Uh, we can't access healthcare using NHIF cover when outside our stations. Right. We're forced to pay cash. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, I got that complaint mm -hmm. and uh, we are looking at that. There are officers also, especially in the discipline service, uh, who, are, who move stations. Somebody was in Busia, 
and then uh, he's been transferred to Mombasa and he had chosen a facility in Busia and the time for change had not arrived, so we are addressing those issues. I want to find out what are the extra benefits I get apart from paying a certain percentage of bed charges. That, uh, I think you yes, answered that so already. Yeah. Um, NHIF should invest by building and equipping new hospitals. What's Kirgoti doing about that? Mutie from Nairobi. Yeah, Kirgoti is doing everything. <laughs> he's, he's doing everything and that is why I'm at this show to say uh, become a member of NHIF. Less, uh, your funds will be secure and we will be able to better those sorts of things. Of course, it is not our core business to build hospitals as NHIF, but it is our core business to, fac uh, to facilitate the, the facilities where our members are going to be. So uh, we take responsibility, although we are not the one running those hospitals, but we take responsibility for telling you, Edith, go to this hospital, mm -hmm. uh, so and so go to this hospital. I'm a civil servant with a child due for discharge, yet NHIF cannot pay because contributions haven't been remitted. Quite inconveniencing. What's happening, Mary? Yeah, this is the, the problem we have he has with the employer. And uh, our quality assurance, uh, we visit uh, various government ministries to find out uh, how is their payroll, uh, their payroll deductions. That officer I don't know why, because normally this thing is detected at source. And how one remittance will have failed, I do not understand. Because even if you are under interdiction or suspension, these are statutory contributions. They must be received. Okay. So. Um, and speaking of remittances, what happens to the person who is maybe a businessman and is yes. out of the country and can't make that contribution that month? Yes. Or um, are you coming up with new technologies? We're seeing mobile money transfers coming yes. up ever yes. so often. Do you have yes. that in the works? Yeah, you, you thought ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. We are thinking of, uh, you know, mobile money transfer. We are thinking of other ways where you can pay. Like now, we are no longer receiving any cash in any counters of NHIF. You go to the bank, we have M-Pesa mm -hmm. uh, facilities. So you should be, you cannot say you are far and that the man that, yeah, otherwise you will attract penalties, by the way. All right. Mm. Are you aware that from the new rates, a person earning lowest salary is deducted 20%, while persons earning over 100,000 contribute only 2%. Mm -hmm. The person earning less uh, contributes more. It should be the other way around. Cheboy mm -hmm. from Satro. I don't know how we worked that was, but I will, I will go and look at it. Uh, because there is uh, an elaborate uh, actual study that was done. Okay. One day. Hi, Katie, and I'm a civil servant. My question is, since our medical allowance was stopped and you're still being deducted 320 shillings, and now you want to deduct more, why can't you use the medical allowance you stopped? Also, please increase the number of beneficiaries from three to six, since all children belong to me. That's Kim from Garissa. Yes, Kim, uh, that is true. Uh, we are looking at uh, the dependents because agreed it's, it's not fair that uh, some of your children who are young are left out. Uh, as for the medical, medical contributions, well, uh, when we go to the new rates, uh, the proposal is that you cannot be taxed twice. So since the civil servants are already, uh, already contributing to mm -hmm. the fund, we will not tell them you contribute again. What about the issue of the children being increased? I mean, the average number of children in Kenya, it is said, is five, if I'm not wrong. We thought it's four. That's why we took four. Four? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, that's not going to increase any time soon? Uh, well, this is something that has to be thought about, and I uh, cannot just give an answer in the studio. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the new NHIF is a good idea, but why is the manner of marketing so poor? As you've said, so many yeah. people do not know about the benefits. Let me, let me assure uh, the, the questioner that that perception will change and it is beginning to change. That is why I'm here and I will be everywhere. My people will also be out there. We will meet the informal sector, we will meet the border borders, we will meet everybody. You will hear a lot about NHF in the coming months. All right. Um, 
Mm. What about if you're not frequently visiting hospitals, uh, maybe once in a year? Also, our office had paid the 1,000 for three workers. Will it be refunded? Well, Edith, you can answer that for me. <laughs> I would rather is, not. <laughs> because this is an insurance. It's like someone telling you, I insured my vehicle and I never got any accident and there was, <laughs> uh, there was no problem. So can you tell the insurance, uh, I wish it was working like that. Otherwise, uh, an insurance is an insurance. Once you paid, you paid. And that is why you cover your brother. This is a social uh, it's a social welfare, it's, it's, it's a social issue where you have, I don't have, you cover me. The money you did not utilize, somebody, is, else, somebody utilized. else has utilized, yeah? And, uh, and again, who will want to be visiting hospitals anyway, yeah? Maybe for routine checkups at the end of the, the year, once in a year or something like that. But if you are not sick, uh, why will you wish to, to utilize the money you had given? Um, actually, speaking of routine checkups, um, there are people who unfortunately constantly need to go to hospital yes. because they suffer terminally. Yes. Do the rules apply? Uh, are they the same for them? Or? Yes, yes, yes. It's comprehensive care. Okay. Yeah. For In everyone. Fact, yeah, yeah. In fact, they're the ones who will benefit more than anybody else. Mm. I pay NHIF since February and until now, I have not received the card and, and I am sick and I do not have money. Uh, I know the, the, there was a problem about uh, the cards, especially outside Nairobi. And uh, we purchased enough card printers. We Actually, it's that. within Nairobi as well, because I remember when I was getting my card, it took me quite a long time to receive it. Yes. Yes, I'm part of the, the, the people. No, 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 no. I think we have changed that scenario now. We bought uh, enough card printers and... Uh, we are distributing them to the various uh, centers, especially big centers, uh, Kisumu, Mombasa, and what have you. But all said and done, if you've already registered with NHIF, that thing is computerized. Just go to the facility, mm -hmm. uh, give out your ID number, yeah? And once they click in, the, the name edit will come off. Actually, can you tell us exactly how it works from the time you go to hospital to the time you're discharged? Yes. Uh, because there are concerns that there are people who are working in medical facilities who are taking advantage of other people's ignorance. Oh, my God. Once you are a registered member, ideally you should be given a card. But even if you did not get a card, uh, you, all your details have been captured. So if you go to a facility, uh, call it whatever you call it, mm -hmm. Uh, they will check in your name, right? There is a form you, you fill in there. And then they will click in that you, you know, they will enter in that they have admitted you. And then that information is relayed to the, to the headquarters and to the nearest branch there. So if you are admitted, by the time you, you leave, they will, co you know, they will commute the number of days you've been in hospital. And then you will sign there, and then they are the ones who will present that to us. So it is as simple as that. Why can't you allow members to choose between NHIF and other service providers as opposed to making it statutory and then taking another cover for uh, what NHIF cannot deliver? NHIF is a government program and uh, we are not saying we are a monopolies, but I think we are the cheapest. We are the cheapest. Um, what about the issue of paying for what NHIF cannot deliver uh, under the new rates? Because now we are we're, we're speaking yes. in the future. Yes. What is it that you will not be able to provide? There's nothing. There's nothing. So if so I that have money will be enough, honestly, that money will be enough. Edith. You're Just promising give us me that if I go to hospital with any condition with my NHIF card, I'll yes. be able to receive whatever treatment. Yes, that's it. That's why we are giving comprehensive cover. Um, mm. And people are asking about the hospitals. Why can't I be allowed to choose a hospital in which I'll get this cover from? For now, like you see, the only, the only people we are giving this window of selecting is the outpatient of the civil service medical scheme. And they are free to choose the medical facilities they want, as long as we have checked and accredited those facilities. Mm -hmm. So that you don't just go and choose some facility which the government is not controlling. 
or a back street facility or something like just because it is your friend's facility and you want us to capitate it uh, or you go to a harbor a gentleman there or some this like bones okay uh, but i do have to ask you know you're saying herbal ingest but there are people who prefer herbal medication how do yeah. you credit these facilities <laughs> <laughs> i like that yes, i like that uh, for now Actually, somebody was telling me we should try and accredit some of these uh, herbalists, yeah? Because they the are The non-conventional hospitals. Yeah. Well, for now, it is non-conventional. We, we have not thought of that. Uh, in fact, somebody was telling me there was a case of Lolliondo. You remember mm -hmm. Lolliondo? So and you that could have been the best hospital Loliondo. for NHIF case. Just, <laughs> just accredit Loliondo and you'll see the number of people who will contribute to NHIF. Um, all right, but then how do you credit the hospitals? Yes. How do you accredit them? We, we how have do you choose which ones get NHIF accreditation? Good, yeah. good, good. This hospital must be registered by government. They must be registered by the, the Pharmacists and Poisons Board. Yeah? The, so there is a whole list, there's a checklist. Uh, what do you have? What's your bed capacity? Uh, where is your laboratory? Where is your X-ray facilities? Where is this? Where is this? And then you tick, then you give marks. You say this one is 97 percent, and then it is this level of that kind of thing. All right. What if you find that a lot of the hospitals which meet these criteria yes. um, are concentrated in one part of the country? Yes, this is a problem we have. This is a problem we have because, uh, uh, like any other development, there has never been. Uh, a uniform, uniform development of facilities. Yeah, uh, even schools, you, you, you find others concentrated in other areas. Health facilities the same. In fact, sometimes civil servants who are in very remote areas find it very difficult because uh, some health facilities have not reached the threshold of accreditation, but then they have to get services. So it's a pity but we must begin from somewhere. Uh, suppose a member perishes and leaves nobody behind, what happens to the money he has been contributing? It's an insurance. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Um, the issue of children still coming up. Why do we as civil servants have a policy that limits us to one physical facility? If somebody falls sick so far from the facility and again making choices every three months, why? Mm. You know, capitation is a very tricky system to operate because once you, you capitate this money depending on the number of people who have chosen that facility. So if you choose this one and you choose this one, it's difficult for us to divide your money and give it to this one. Yeah. yeah. However, we are going to look for a window where at the same time if you change the facility, you inform us then we will inform these people that this fellow was capitated to you within this period and from this period he has moved to this one. All right, we're just winding down. I'll probably take three more questions. What happens to existing members who have already prepaid the old rates? Now that uh, the new rates might be implemented, will he or she enjoy new status? That's J.K. Mwangi from Eldorad. I hadn't even thought about Adi, that. What is that? Um, a <coughs> person who has already prepaid, but then yes. with the old rates. Yes. So you've paid your NHIF contribution for the whole year, yes. but under the old rates. Yes. Do you get the new status um, do you enjoy th the, the luxuries of the new rates? We will find out, we will find out. Uh, and that's why I say I welcome these contributions because they will assist me actually also in bettering the service I will, I will provide. Um, I'm a member and last week I went to hospital but I was told to pay 200 shillings for the card. Why pay extra money? And from Mombasa. Yeah. This was uh, what was agreed between the civil servants and the NHIF that we have something called a co-payment where if you go to a government facility you pay 100 shillings, uh, if you go to a private facility you pay 200. This was uh, a kind of uh, administrative and to also stop any other person just waking up every day and going there. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we make payments quarterly, biannually, ETC, especially for those of us who do not rely on monthly incomes? Agreed. Never. Agreed. How Agreed. does that work? And then, yes. But then now, when you're in between rates, how does one know which rates to pay for? When you're in between what? Um, the old rates and the yes. new rates. No, no, no. For now, we, uh, we are talking about the old rates. The new rates, we will know about it tomorrow. Yeah. 
Hopefully. Um, all right. Mm. Last question. Mm. NHIF, please advise how can Wanjiko join the scheme? Kindly also clarify the mode of payment for non formal sector. Uh, that's Wanjiko from Nairobi. Welcome, Wanjiko. We have our team of NHIF inspectors uh, visiting various uh, stalls and areas of informal sector, uh, recruiting members and registering. If there are any questions, there are NHIF offices all over the country. One can visit there. You, there is a, a customer care desk where you will be assisted to fill those forms. Otherwise, everybody is welcome to be a member of NHIF. All right. Unfortunately, that's why we uh, that's why we have to end with the questions. There were so many. Thank you so much for them. Uh, but Mr. Kilgoti, I'll give you a chance to give closing remarks before we yes. end this interview. Um, yeah. You've had a lot of hard questions that you've yeah. had to deal with. Yeah. A lot of things, obviously, that need sorting out. What yeah. do you want Kenyans to be left with? I want Kenyans, for one, to trust NHIF. I want Kenyans, and especially contributors, to know that their money is safe and that we will try as much as possible to ensure that the facilities they visit are up to standard. I want Kenyans also to know that this is their fund. Unlike any other private entity, this is run by the government and uh, professional officers have been recruited and we are sure we are going to modernize the fund to their levels. I like the kind of questions that have been given. It is a challenge to me. It's a challenge to my board, it's a challenge to management, and I've taken notes, and many others, I'm sure, have always been talking to me informally. We will look at this so that we can better the services for all Kenyans. Thank you very much for coming into studio. Yeah. That is Samon Olekirgoti, the acting National Health Insurance Fund CEO. And I'm Edith Kimani. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of KT and Sunrise Live for all your questions and contributions. We do appreciate them. If you still have burning issues, pertinent questions, 8040 is our SMS number. Do send them to us. Um, we'll go through them. And if there are any questions which will, be, uh, which will need forwarding, then they'll definitely get to the right people. Thank you for your viewership. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be seeing you at one o'clock for KTN Live at one. Stay tuned.